Exactly 14 minutes after 7, we're talking about lupus or autoimmune disorders. Uh, one lady who has a lot to share on this particular subject is joining me, Emma Ham Danso, who is the founder of Oyeman Autoimmune. And you can call her simply Sweetness. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Sweetness. Good morning. <laughs> so what's this disease all about? Lupus is an autoimmune disorder that affects mostly the joints and other parts of the body through inflammations. Um, it autoimmune basically is a system where the person's immune system gets confused mm. and produces antibodies against their healthy mm. cells. So it fights against auto is self and so so instead of fighting against uh, diseases of fighting that, are, against that come the pathogens it fights they, against its yes, own self it fights against itself okay and it's in different forms it's it's called a great imitator because it imitates so many other sicknesses it's not easy to diagnose today it may look like a headache tomorrow it will look like a joint pain mm. the next time it will look like a hypertensive kind of sickness because it can affect any part of the body mm. and it comes in different severities yeah mm -hmm. uh, i'm told that you have a personal story to share there's a reason you're passionate about this subject yes um i suffered from lupus um for about eight years okay and at the time that it happened, I was so ignorant about it. So I went through various cycles of frustration, depression, anger, bitterness, because I could not fathom what I was going through, what why, were you exhibiting? why it was happening to me. Mm. I have had different kinds of symptoms over the years. There have been times that I have had loss of hair, there have been times that I've had ulcers. There have been so many times of having extreme muscular pains, mm. um, um, joint pains, swellings, skin um, deteriorations. There have been times that I've had blood clots. So it's, it, it keeps changing all the time. So how difficult was was it for you to be diagnosed? Well, um, the, the confirmation actually was gotten after eight years. After eight years? Uh-huh. Wow. Of, um, but before that, what did different doctors tell you? Before that, my doctor told me that it was an autoimmune related um, sickness okay. you know but interestingly the first the first time I went to the hospital the doctor said it was carpal tunnel syndrome because I that that I had started feeling all these um, pains in my wrist and my finger um, joints so they said it was carpal tunnel syndrome and gave me some pain medications as well as um, wrist splints to put on and mm. all that but then it came also into my feet okay so then I, I i was out of ghana then so i just prayed to god that you know what i don't know what is happening maybe it's my malaria so wait and let me get to ghana where i can get malaria drugs and then i will be fine and i came here and had a very terrible crisis and through that um, we we came to um, a conclusion that it was related to an autoimmune kind of disorder, but okay. it was not for certain. Mm. Is this common in Ghana? Interestingly, yes. Before, I thought it was a foreign kind of um, disorder that people in the West have, because in the West, it's very prevalent among um, African Americans. However, until I got to become aware of it, then I realized that quite a lot of people in Ghana mm. um, have it. And interestingly, it's a silent killer because it's not easy to diagnose. And also, 
even when people are diagnosed with it, it is really expensive to to manage and bring, mm. you know, under control. So are you completely so. off it or it's something that you have to manage, it cannot be cured? It is chronic and so that means that if you're diagnosed with it, um, according to medical science, you have to live with it for the rest of your life. Okay. You just have to manage it to bring it under control. Mm. Um, but I say that your outlook on life determines what you get from it. So I always have a positive um, approach to it and tell myself that despite the fact that I take medications, I am healed and I'm going to get off mm. the medications. Mm. But I have gotten off the medications um, on my own several times and had very life-threatening flares, you know, and so... Um, one so it's not good to be off it. You have to be on the medications. Mm. And um, my pastor told me that I, I should not tell God how to heal me. I should do what I have to do and yeah. let him use his own way of, of healing, of, of healing me. True. Yes. Mm. Um, Is there something that you're not able to do because of this disorder? Yes. The reason why lupus is, needs much attention is because the very things that others are able to do easily every day become so difficult for you to do. Mm. It completely reduces your quality of life. For instance, I've had instances where even scratching my scalp was the most difficult thing in the really? world. Really? Because you couldn't reach it? I could not lift my hand to scratch it and then I'll be telling um, probably my husband to scratch my scalp and he'll be scratching the wrong part because mm -hmm. he doesn't know where I'm hitching and that is very frustrating. I've had instances where I could not open my mouth wide enough to bite a small piece of banana. First of all I had all ulcers so even water burns in your mouth and then you cannot open a wide enough to even brush your teeth or do any kind of thing and you have extreme fatigue for nothing um, you have just basic basic thing being able to wash being able to you know handle yourself and being able to take your own bath so you, you, you simply can't do you it simply you just feel like you are tied up mm. you know one time I, I was lying on bed and I asked myself, what's the use of having hands and legs when I can't use them? And I was so mad and later on, I, after just crying and crying, I just told myself that look, at least I'm not amputated. I still have them. When the pains go away, I will still be a complete human being. So no matter the condition I was in, there mm. was still reason to be yeah. grateful for life. Sure. But now you want to help others. You want to reach yes. out to others. I want to do that. So my husband and I have um, established Oyemam Autoimmune Foundation. And Oyemam Autoimmune Foundation basically has four main thematic areas fundraising, advocacy, education, and medical assistance for needy people going through that. Okay. When I um, got pregnant, I had no clue, first of all, that I was pregnant because knowing that with such condition, getting pregnant was extremely risky. I always played it safe, but strangely enough, I got to find out three and a half months later that I was pregnant and I started having abnormal black clots and that was threatening the life of the baby and mm. my life. But thankfully, um, God made ways for me to get um, help outside of Ghana. And with the experiences I had, I realized that we don't have that much support here for people. I am very certain I would have died because even the manner in which a doctor spoke to me in one of the major hospitals in this nation really depressed me. And I was so disappointed, I had to run to go and seek solace somewhere else. Mm. And I realized that people need to be made aware mm. so that others can bear with them. Okay. For example, if you are an, an employer, 
you need to understand that your employees' commitments and plans and schedules may change because the disease is very unpredictable. Mm. And so this is what we are doing and also using the media, um, talking to different people, medical experts, pharmaceuticals, individuals to come out to support other people that may go mm. through it. So how can people reach your foundation? People can get to Oyemam Foundation through our mobile number, which is um, 0243-145-616. And also our Facebook page, which is Oyemam Autoimmune Foundation, just the name. And also through the email, um, which is oyemamfoundation at gmail.com. So these or you can get to our website also, which is oyemamfoundation.org mm. and get in touch and see how you can support. It does not necessarily have to be money. It can be adopting a patient because lupus affects mainly females within 15, the bracket of 15 to 44 years. And because there's no known cause, it does not have to be in your family history. It mm. can just creep up on you at any point within that. Mm, okay. So it is, it is in our own interest to support each other so that in case it should happen to someone close by you, you are well informed and prepared and you have also invested to make sure that there's help mm. in case they should sure. need it. All right, sweetness, we have to leave it here, but I appreciate you sharing your personal stories with us, and we hope that people would reach out to these platforms that you've given so that mm. we can all help and support ourselves. Sure. Thanks, for, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, coming up, we have a conversation with Amnesty about this recent report that has been outdoored. More on that when we come back.